Yo, what is going on ladies and gentlemen, Horcrux here and welcome back to the channel. So in this video, I'm going to be showcasing you guys my Immortal Dragonite PvP build for the Lost Depths DLC. This is the most broken build that has ever graced this channel. It's even more broken than Broken Soul ever was. If you guys can't believe it, we'll take a look at the clips here in just a moment. And BT dubs all the clips that you about to see, as well as the recording was taken live from YouTube and Twitch. So if you guys want to be a part of all of that, please like and sub to the channel. And do not forget to hit the bell icon just so you guys are notified when I upload content. And also when I go live, because every now and then I do put out some pretty decent content for you guys. So without further ado, let's hop into the video. Anger ain't a potion, rub it on like lotion I can feel it soaking, reopen, the scars have awoken I can't move on till I let go I feel so lost, never at home Need to be strong, every breath hold Cause I can't move on till I let go I can't move on till I let go I feel so lost, never at home Need to be strong, every breath hold I can't move on till I let go What is going on ladies and gentlemen, we're going to start this stream off a little bit different. We're going to do a live build video at the beginning of this and hopefully I don't mess up too much. I can go back and just crop this out and make this into a build video tomorrow because last night all stream guys, I already got some insane clips. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, I begged for some gold and someone gave me like 3 million gold in zone chat. I'm not going to lie. I was an absolute peasant because I was so impatient on getting this. So. We got it, boys, so enjoy it while you can. So without further ado, guys, I'm not sure how long this build will be relevant, so enjoy it while you can. Let me make sure, uh, see if any of my items sold. Ah, uh, yeah, look at this. Look at this. Yes. I've been selling. I got like three rings. They all sold for like a million each. And this one I put in for 500k because I was lazy. But yeah, yeah, live build for you guys. So we're going to go over the build. All right, and then we're going to hop into some PvP. I'm going to show you guys how it's fucking done. All right, character sheet, guys. We are a Breton. Breton, I don't know if it's best in slot or not. Um, right now, since we don't have Iron Blood, I think Breton's are really, really strong. Um, you could alternatively go Imperial. So uh, let me know if the music is too loud as well. Yo, what's going on, Delo? Chat, everyone, everyone. I'm trying to get through this build, and then we'll kind of hop into, uh, hop into the gameplay, right? So spoke criticals at 30%, much higher there in 24.4 from before. We got 52 points into Magicka because I'm OCD about my magic pool. Health is at 28k. Would not go over that with this build because your healing is through the roof. As you guys may have guessed it, it is Mara Ballsack we're going to be using. A little bit spoiler alert. Be with Sugar Soul is really cheap to be using, right? We'll be using the Atro Mundus. Um, I'm over sustaining with this uh, with the Breton passive, so you could potentially swap this to the Warrior if you wanted to, or you could go with the Lover for more spell penetration. Entirely up to you. Welcome to the chat, Nico. So here's character sheet completely unbuffed. Fully buffed up, you get up to 8,000 weapon damage. 8,000 weapon damage, even though we are running a heavy armored defensive set on the back bar. 
I'm not gonna be able to show you that right here because I have to actually be in combat and I have to actually take damage because one of the assists we're running is Sea Serpent Squirrel, which is going to, get to give you the Major Courage. So with continuous attack, Major Courage, and the sets we're running, you're going to easily get up to 8,000 weapon damage. You can push that even higher if you're a high elf, or you can push that even higher if you want to go with a different Mundus as well. So, first bar, guys. Burning Spell Weave. Now, this is interchangeable. Depends on what you're doing. Burning Spell Weave for now, because you have to have more damage. Molt Whip got nerfed into the fucking ground, okay? You you have to have more bursts. That's the issues I was running with. On stream, there's just not enough damage running like a utility set, like Play Break. Now, you can swap Burning Spell Weave out for Play Break. Absolutely, depends how you play it. Both of them are kind of interchangeable on this build. It really doesn't matter. I will say, however, if you run Play Break instead of Burning Spell Weave on this build, you will have to have two infused cost reductions. That's just comfortable for me but if you're running burning spell weave you only need one infused cost reduction so when it comes to traits nerd home for your main hand charge for your all pan they actually nerfed this down from i think 220 percent down to 182.5 for whatever reason when it comes to the status effects we're running poison and disease you can put shot glyphs you can put whatever glyphs you want here i just these are just the glyphs i had on at the time it really doesn't matter so we got burning spell weave uh, we're gonna have burning spell weave on the body this is five light one medium one heavy you don't need any more resistances than you already have you want to take a look at the resistances on the back bar just for shits and giggles and this is without other procs we're already at 30k spell resistance also 25.5k physical resist with breton passes this goes up by another 4,000. you know with spell resistance and also with blood spawn proc this goes up by additional 4,000, essentially so you're damn near capped off at 40k spell resist on this build and like way over 30k physical resist all right so all right, room we are running blood spawn. Um, ideally, again, guys, you want to run five light, one medium, one heavy. I do not have a light piece of blood spawn or, or really anything. So, uh, I mean, it is what it is. So on this current build, it's too heavy, four light, one medium, but ideally you want a five, one, one. So you can run uh, whatever traits you want, uh, impenetrable. It really doesn't matter. Uh, well fitted, just really depends on your play style. The only thing that I would really suggest is if you have a heavy chest, all right? and then uh, have it infused just so you get the most bang for your buck. So we have Blood Spawn as a monster set. Burning Spell we front bar, again, Nern Ho and Charge. I would not change out those traits. And then we're gonna have Mars Bomb. This is fucking nutty, all right? So you already know two, three piece, four piece healing taken, five piece when negative effect is removed from you, your store, 2100 health is actually 2200 uh, when everything's buffing, yada, yada. So when you take damage, you get, when you have six or more negative effects, it actually purges all those, which isn't why we're running the set anyway. Mars Bomb thoroughly tested this, guys. When it says it removes a negative effect, it means everything. When you reapply a dot, when you purge a dot, when you cleanse anything, if let's say for example uh some sets reapply hemorrhage like every one second right you're getting killed 1000 every single second that is reapplied um there's really baby dick dots and the double dot poisons only last a couple of seconds when those fall off you get thousand tick every single time if someone again is like reapplying dots you're gonna get a thousand tick every single time and the beauty about this set is that there's zero internal cooldown that means you can potentially get healed like 10,000 a second. Depends how many effects roll off on you at once. And that's what makes this set so powerful. And I don't know if I'm going to put the clips at the beginning or maybe after where this, this interlude is. But you're going to see where I'm literally just standing in the middle of a Zerg. Not doing anything. I take my hands off the controller. I sit down. I just stand there on my back bar. And I'm okay. Nothing fucking happens. Nothing. My, my health does not drop. You can see the whoop, 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 whoop. And it just doesn't go anywhere. This set is utterly broken, but it's only broken if you're one VXing or like two VXing. The, the more people you have in your group, the less effective this becomes because you are not the center of attention. This set is all about being the center of attention. So, impenetrable, it really doesn't matter. Fits your play style, well fitted, impen, uh, really is really good for your traits. Uh, you can toss them some sturdy if you wanted to, but I highly suggest if you're an open world or well fitted, it's just a better trait all around. I did forget to mention on the back bar, however, we are running Powered Mars Bomb Ice Staff. Rapid Region got nerfed into the ground. There's no point in running Rapid Region anymore, so we swapped to the Frost Staff. The reason I'm running a Frost Staff over Sword Board is because I like to have a high uptime on my weapon damage enchantment. Whereas if you're running Sword Board, you can't necessarily have your weapon damage enchantment up 100% of the time, okay? So. Notice we're not running defending, we're running powered, okay? It doesn't matter what your defenses are on this. You see on tooltip here is at 2300. 
uh, when it comes to the health you can get back for every negative effect removed. You want to amplify the amount of healing restored as much as possible. And that's why we're running power on the back bar. You can see clearly with our resistances, we're going to not going to need it. This is going to go up with blood spawn. This is going to go up with our Britain passive. So you don't need any more defenses than you already have. Okay. All right, let's go down into the very last set that we're going to be running. Uh, sea Serpent Scoil, like I mentioned it earlier. So when you're at full health, you get 40% damage mitigation. Since the nerf to Calorians, uh, this is beautiful because no Nightblade can gank you. They want to wind up a heavy attack or an in cap right from the start. That's going to be 40% less damage. That's going to give you time to react. You're never going to get ganked on this build thanks to Sea Serpent Scoil. In addition to that, when you're in battle and you are restoring health, you know, once you get back to 100% to health, you get Serpent Tribute for 10 seconds, snaring yourself by 40%. But if you guys have watched my advanced movement mechanics video on how to B-hop effectively, you can essentially completely negate the snare altogether. And yes, you can offset this a little bit by running Swift Traits or having minor expedition major expedition um, it really depends on your play style me personally i don't really care because you'll be the center of attention anyway and i just think that you can roll dodge and be hop and negate most of this uh, snare effect and the good thing about this is that Mar uh, mars ball sack does proc this you don't have to cast in a healing ability at all just as long as you're on your back bar and you get a heal from Mar mars ball sack this is going to be like 100 percent of time it's beautiful so you can get Major Berserk and also Major Courage, which is going to make the tooltips on your whips really juicy. Yes, they nerfed them a lot, but this is really the only way to get that damage back that Zoss really took a shit on us with Gilliam. I hate you. Nightblade's got a buff. Everything got a nerf. It's kind of weird that Gilliam's a Nightblade, right? <laughs> cough, cough. Um, but uh, let me just kind of elaborate one more, a little bit more on Burning Spellweave. Again, Burning Spellweave is here. You can swap this out for, like, if you're kind of new to the channel, what Burning Spellweave does. It just gives you a buff that increases your weapon spell damage by uh, 500, and you don't have to be on this bar at all times. So once you get this buff active, you can swap between your bars and it's still active. And another thing to note, uh, Mars Ball Sack, you don't want to double bar this um, because you really, really don't give a shit about the heal on your front bar. You really only want to be turtling. You don't want to be turtling at all if you can on the DK because the DK, like the best offense, is a good defense. That's how you want to react. But when you are stuck on your back bar, this is going to heal you through the roof and it's really going to alleviate you to where you don't have to waste all your resources spamming coag spamming vigor to get all your heroes back because all that's gonna be compensated with just a set like on your back bar you're probably not gonna die okay i like honest to god if you guys see the clips of the beginning you're gonna see what i'm talking about so let's go over the skill sets now this is pretty reminiscent of last patch i haven't changed anything on the front bar Engulfing Flames, the only reason we have Engulfing Flames here is to have Noxious Breath. Yes, Noxious Breath does give you more net damage, but it is a hit to your stamina sustain. So notice that Molten Whip now costs stamina in this patch, and also we're running Vigor on the back bar, which is going to tap into our stamina uh, pool as well. So you don't want to have too many stamina abilities, otherwise you're not going to be able to sustain. Uh, Shattering Rocks, because this gives you a nice juicy heal afterwards. Um, some of the patch changes, or this now does Flame Damage, which has a chance to apply the Brain Sass effect, which is awesome. Flames of Oblivion, uh, this is our main spammable. We're not using whip as our spammable. We're only using uh, whip as our spammable in very niche situations, which I'm not going to talk about in this video. So Flames of Oblivion is going to be used to proc our Molten Fury stacks, which now last 15 seconds. And also when you consume your Fury stacks, um, you actually still maintain the weapon spell damage that provides. So you pretty much always have an extra 300 weapon spell damage on you at all times, which is awesome. Plus it gives you crit. Molten Whip, uh, I tried Power Lash. Power Lash is really good too. Uh, but if you run Power Lash, you're going to have to end up running uh, Talons. And right now, this is a burst meta. Dots are absolute dog shit. You may notice on tooltips here, everything lasting 24 seconds. These dots tickle. They do absolutely fucking nothing, okay? They're, they're just useless. So you have to have burst. DK does not have burst. You just don't. So the only way you're ever going to get burst is with Molten Whip. So you may be able to run build like whittle people down with Talons and Power Lash, but if you're against like five, six, you know, 10 people, you're, they're going to get healed through it. So you have to have some sort of burst. And this is why I'm always going to opt for Molten Whip, even though they took a shit on it. All right, Burning Embers, uh, they did change this. Uh, netly, this really hasn't changed um, because they extended, they, they doubled the dot duration, which means the dots do half of the damage. Okay, but you now heal for double what it was last patch. So even though you're healing for 100% of the damage done, the damage is now halved. So it's essentially kind of like what was last patch. All right, so uh, next is Ferocious Leap. This is our gap closer. You have to have this on your front bar because when 
Sea Serpent Squirrel procs and it slows you to fucking like a turtle. Okay, you have to have some sort of gap closer and sun just to kind of catch people fleeing away. Sometimes Sea Serpent Squirrel, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, will bite you in the ass. It will be frustrating to catch up to some people who's just like speeding around rocks and stuff. I say fuck it, just let them come to you. All right, if they won't play like that, then you'll let them be a pussy. Who cares? Uh, back bar running igneous weapons. There's really no point in running a Mona Arminets anymore just because uh, of the uh, nerf to uh, the empowerment. It doesn't work the way it did, and it's just dog shit. So, igneous weapons, even though it's only level one, it's going to give you uh, a minute and 10 seconds uh, buff, uh, which is pretty cool because it helps with your sustain, so you don't have to reapply this too often at all. Uh, you do need a heal, however, so quiet getting blood on the back bar. Again, we're running Resolving Vigory instead of. Rapid regeneration because they nerfed it by like half, so it's completely useless now. Plus, the uh, block mitigation from the frost staff running on the back bar is pretty nice. So, they did make some changes to this. They did nerf the healing a little bit, but they also added uh, minor uh, resolve. Now, I was going to run Magnet Incarnate, which gives you minor resolve, but since Resolving Vigor already gives it to you, that's kind of redundant. So, that's why I opt for Blood Swan. And you can also run Battle Lords if you want a little more burst. Uh, just keep that in mind. Volta Armory pretty much does the exact same thing, except it does flame damage now, and now it's flame damage over 20 seconds, you know, uh, I mean, it, it is what it is, it's, it's kind of lame. And plus, everyone who attacks you gets hit with flame damage, which is really convenient because now you can inflict the brain sass effects of people who actually is attacking you. I think the uptime on this is only like 3 to 5% chance to apply the burning sass effect. Um, but, I mean, it, it's something, right? Now, this is where the build gets really juicy, okay? Sandstorm under the radar. This is supposed to be heal every two seconds. They left it every one second. This is the strongest heal in the game by far, and it costs you literally nothing to maintain. I highly suggest this on every single DK build. Doesn't matter if you're doing, doesn't matter if you're in battlegrounds, doesn't matter if you're in the open world. This is fucking phenomenal. This is the bread and butter. And there's also a little abusive trick you can use with Cinderstorm. You can use a passive. So take a look at my stamina bar. It's going up by, uh, let's see, 400 there, uh, 1,000 there. It goes up by 1,100 there. Now check this out. If we just spam Cloud, it's just giving us free stamina back for no reason. And you can animation cancel this, make it a little bit quicker. And the reason it's doing that is because of one of our passives. Uh, I believe it's that Mountain's Blessing. Yes, when you cast an Earthen Heart ability, you and your group uh, I actually completely lied. That is not what it is. When you cast a non-stamina or the hard ability, you restore stamina. So, e so even though we're casting this down for 39 magicka, okay, you're getting a thousand stamina. So when you're low on stamina and you don't really have anyone to heavy attack on your front bar with your dual wield, hey, you can just simply just spam this and you can get all your stamina back for literally free of cost. So they didn't fix this bug, so we have to abuse everything we can because DKs are dog shit right now. I'm not gonna lie to you, unless you're running very niche builds, like top tier builds, you're, you're gonna struggle. Uh, you're, you're gonna struggle a lot. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it for you guys. Um, right now, if you are able to 1vx, more power to you because th this is tough, man. Uh, and uh, you can run whatever ultimate you want in the back. We're always going with corrosive. Uh, you can run standard if you're in group play. It's uh, entirely up to you. So let's go into champion points. The champion points really hasn't changed too much. Um, if you're running play break, you definitely want a cult overload. Uh, right now, I just have a cult overload for the off chance that I'm able to kill someone with a burning sass effect to get that oblivion damage. Now, this oblivion damage goes through everything, even if a DK is in corrosive, which it only caps out the damage you're supposed to be able to receive at 3%. Well, it actually goes completely through that and it does the entire 12,800. So, uh, just some food for thought there. And then, uh, like I said, we need more burst, as much burst as we can get. So we're running with Deadly Aim and Master's Arms to really bolster the effects of Molten Whip. Now, if you want to go with the AoE, you can go with Binding Aura. This is going to bolster the initial hits of Engulfing Flames, uh, Leap. And I think that's all the AoE that you have. So uh, it really depends uh, how you want to run this. I prefer to bolster the damage of Molten Whip because it's much more consistent. And then the last CP pass that we're running, you can run kind of whatever. I felt like um, I want to have a little bit more mitigation. And instead of dual tree buffs, since dots are absolute dog shit this patch, um, I just run Ironclad instead. Uh, this is entirely up to you. This is kind of a flex spot. If you really want to get creative, right, you can go down here to last stand. Now, we will be having a build either uh, next week or the week after that with 100% uptime on Corrosive. It's going to be a two-bar build as well, um, utilizing a last stand, uh, minor heroism potions, uh, Tava's favor, uh, Potente, some blood spawn, yada yada. So you can play around with that. Now, there's a strategy to keep this at 100% uptime. I'll explain that in a uh, future video. So if you want to be around for that, please like and sub and hit the bell icon just so you're notified when the build actually goes live and you can be the first to absolutely abuse it. Alright, 
Red tree. Uh, green tree doesn't matter. Uh, you kind of have flex spot. You can either go fortified or balanced vitality. Honestly, you should probably toss fortified um, into your sustained by suffering. It's entirely up to you, which I may actually do that right now, actually. Uh, because I do think sustained by suffering is going to have more benefits than this little bit of armor that we're having. I was playing around with some uh, some other builds earlier. So yeah, this should be sustained by suffering. My bad. And when it comes to sustained by suffering, pain's refuge, relentlessness, and survival instincts is what I'm using. Survival instincts is really useful because this is all your core combat abilities. Block, break free, uh, roll dodge. There's another one. I can't think of it. So yeah, so that's really helpful. A couple of other things to note, uh, the rest of staff heavy attack, if someone's trying to get resources back, you can uh, roll dodge that so they don't get resources back anymore, you know, just uh, for you duelists out there. And now when it comes to the green tree, it really doesn't matter, but I'm always going to run Steed's Blessing and also Liquid Efficiency, and also these two guys just so I can ride around, you know, Speedy Gonzalez style. And when it comes to potions, guys, um, if you can, and if you have a lot of gold, which you should have a lot of gold if you watch my video about how to sell Mars ball sack day one you should be swimming in gold right now you'll you'll want to make these uh, heroism potions which is going to help with your sustain and uh, they're, they're just phenomenal all around definitely best in slot for the magic of dragon knight if you intend on 1v xing you kind of have to have these these crutch lord potions so you make these by dragon's rum a uh, dragon's bile no excuse me dragon's rum dragon's blood and uh, Columbine, uh, I do believe. Uh, there's also other iterations of this to get minor heroism. I'm not going to discuss them in this video because it does get a little expensive. But essentially, it's a tripos, a potion. Instead of giving you health and health recovery, it gives you minor heroism for the entire duration. So, that about does it for the build, guys. Hopefully, this is nice, short, and sweet. You enjoyed the clips at the beginning of the video. I will be streaming this all week as much as i can until they nerf this set into oblivion so until that time we're going to abuse and have fun with it guys and so if you have any questions about the build please hit me up in the discord hit me up in the comments i try my best to respond to each and every single comment and you know whatever's going on if you want one-on-one -on -one pvp coaching because this is definitely gonna be the patch for if you feel like you're struggling just hit me up in discord i have patreon tiers and discord uh, channels and you know, j j just whatever you guys need to kind of take your gameplay to the next level I'm gonna throw my my shield in at the end of the video So if you guys made it this far and you actually want to get some a little bit better PvP, you know Just hit me up uh, anytime. I got free time. I'm not gonna be a stickler about oh, yeah We're gonna schedule time slots. No, man like, anytime you need help. Just just hit me up. I got you guys All right, so with all that being said, thank you all so much for watching this video and uh, Don't forget to like and sub and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace